Under pressure of growing communist aggression, the flow of American equipment and advisors is increased. It is the only means of meeting... In the 1950s, Nixon backed the deployment of American military advisors to South Vietnam. Superior equipment and mobility are used to full advantage to carry the fight to the enemy, swiftly, wherever his presence becomes known. Nixon supported President Kennedy's decision to reinforce the American presence in Vietnam. He also backed President Johnson when in 1965 he sent in combat troops and escalated the conflict into full-scale war. Renewed hostile actions against United States ships on the high seas in the Gulf of Tonkin have today required me to order the military forces of the United States to take action in reply. That reply is being given. Air action is now in execution. But massive firepower and half a million American troops were not enough. Casualties rose year by year. And as more and more American boys were killed and maimed, the war became ever more divisive at home. On successive visits to Vietnam, Nixon began to see that the war would be the burning issue in the 1968 presidential election. Nixon would use the issue of Vietnam to bring himself back to national prominence. I am saying that it is my view that perhaps the major factor that is prolonging this war and that is stiffening the enemy's will to resist is the apparent division within the United States. America was split between hawks who supported the war and doves who wanted peace. It was a time of chaos, confusion, and a total lack of trust in the future. It's hard to remember that 30 years ago, 160 cities in the United States burned. We had rioters in the streets, anti-war protesters. Vietnam was tearing the United States apart. It was truly our second civil war, the most serious and divisive event in American history since the Civil War, a century earlier. Uh, families were divided. Parties were divided, and uh, working in the Johnson White House was extraordinary. One felt one was in a bunker that was out of touch with reality. They didn't really understand in the White House what was going on in the nation. They didn't really understand in the White House what was going on in the field. Nixon seems to have realized that the politician who promised to bring the boys back home could be the next president of the USA. In February 1968, Nixon declared that he would run for president. But as you enter a campaign, you must go in with confidence, and I have great confidence, not cockiness, but confidence. I believe that. I will be the strongest candidate, and I believe I can beat Lyndon Johnson. Campaigning hard in the primaries, Nixon told voters he would end the war. His conservative supporters thought he meant to win it. I want to tell you of an exciting But privately, Nixon thought otherwise. My friends... Basically, he had an approach to disengage and to gradually de-escalate that war to the point where there could be a diplomatic settlement, a fig leaf, and the United States could get out of it.
In January 1968, the communists launched the devastating Tet Offensive. The U.S. was caught by surprise. In the heart of Saigon, the American embassy itself came under attack. To many, the war now seemed unwinnable. Lyndon Johnson wanted America out. On March the 31st, in a broadcast to the nation, LBJ made a stunning announcement. I shall not seek, and I will not accept, the nomination of my party for another term as your president. President Johnson was worried about his health. Uh, he had asked me to prepare withdrawal statements as far back as the, the summer of 1967. He wanted, though, to get something for it. So he saw his decision to withdraw as a way to tell the North Vietnamese everything I do from now on is strictly as president to get you to the peace table. Johnson's withdrawal meant that Vice President Hubert Humphrey became the Democratic candidate in what would be an extremely close presidential race. We all clearly felt, and so did President Nixon, that it was a political step taken by President Johnson in order to enhance Vice President Humphrey's chances uh, to win the election. And uh, we all felt that President Johnson was capable of uh, taking such a step. Nixon uh, was astounded by the, uh, the whole thing. This was so completely unexpected. And it sort of derailed uh, the campaign. By the summer of 1968, Johnson's peace drive had brought American and North Vietnamese diplomats to Paris for secret negotiations. But when LBJ flew to Hawaii to meet South Vietnam's President Chu, he failed to persuade him to join the talks. President Chu and his ambassador in Washington were reluctant to go to Paris. The South Vietnamese leaders perceived at that time that President Nixon uh, would uh, continue the policy of a good many American troops they wanted us to stay. They were not too happy with Vice President Humphrey, who had made uh, speeches and comments that they thought might lead to uh, evacuation of Vietnam by American troops. Johnson was desperate to end the war. Uh, Nixon was afraid that uh, some surprise would be sprung in the last two weeks of uh, the election. That same summer, the Republican convention was held in Florida. Nixon sat in his hotel room, waiting to be nominated as presidential candidate. The youngest delegate of the New Jersey delegation cast its vote for the next president of the United States, Richard Nixon. There, we work for those. <laughs> there are 30 votes in Wisconsin. And this should put him across. Wisconsin is proud to cast it's 30 votes for the nominee of this convention, Richard M. Nixon. Johnson's peace drive presented Nixon with a political problem. Ending the war was a key part of his platform. All right, thank you very much. If the Democrats brought off the peace talks, he might lose the election. And this time, Nixon was determined not to lose. Tonight, I again proudly accept that nomination for President of the United States. But I have news for you. This time, there's a difference. This time, we're going to win.